continue our sermon series on uh, genuineness living as we look at what it takes to live a generous life. And people who live a generous life uh, we feel that their life is full of, of peace, of joy, of contentment, of purpose. Um, they, they literally have less stress um, and less anxiety and worry. And those who live a generous life simply have a better life than those who don't. And we establish uh, that a generous life is not about one act or, or an act or several acts. A generous life is really more about an attitude, about the way we approach life and, and live life itself. And we look at and we explain the meaning behind this statement that God loves a cheerful giver. In the first three weeks, we have also established that, that one can be generous and not follow Jesus. But it is impossible to claim to be a follower or a disciple of Jesus and not be generous. So you ask yourself, why? Why is giving important to God? Why is being generous vital to our walk in faith? And why did Jesus say things like in the 14th chapter of Luke, Jesus says, when you give a banquet, when you throw a party, invite the poor people, invite the crippled people, the lame people, and the blind. And if you do that, you will be blessed because they can't repay you. For, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The things are right with God. And if you look and review all of the teachings of Jesus, you will find that basically everything revolves around one four-letter word. You know what that is? It's love. Love God. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. It's this triangle of love. Everything Jesus says is love. Jesus says everything he teaches is, is how you should love and who you should love and when you should love and, and what you should love. And, and, and it all can be summed up in the action of one thing. Of one word. And that word is give. I mean, think about that for a second. I mean, we show love by giving. I mean, we give our time. I mean, we give our energy. We give our emotional commitment. We give our money. I mean, we, we give our help to people. We give our passion to people. We give our assistance to people. We, we, give, we give people to show that we love them, our emotional investment. I mean, to love, you have to give. I mean, if you don't <laughs> give, if you withhold, that's not love. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's not. It may be something else, but it's not love. And today's scripture, the Apostle Paul echoes this, these teachings of Jesus. And we, before we read it, we kind of need to understand what's going on here. Just, just a few chapters before, the Apostle Paul met with the elders of the church in Ephesus. All heard of Ephesians. He meets with the elders and the leaders and the pastors of Ephesus. And, and it's a sad occasion because Paul is, is bound. He's in custody, if you will. Um, and he is bound and they're taking him to Rome. And, and when they get to Rome, Paul knows... Um, and, and they know that either A, he's going to be imprisoned for the rest of his life, or B, he will be executed. So he knows. And, and, and Paul has, has taught this group of people. I mean, he raised them up in faith, if you will. And now he offers this sort of a, a final goodbye address. And, and, and Paul breaks it down into three parts. Um, and, and, you know, this to this great leaders to these great leaders of this community. And he sets out some expectations on who will lead and how they should lead and who will lead after he's gone. And in verse 28, before our scripture today, he instructs them simply to feed the church. Feed the church. We got people hungry around here. Feed them. Um, and, then, and then in verse 19 or 29 to 31, he kind of warns them against some various dangers facing the church. He kind of says, you need to kind of watch out for this, and you need to kind of watch out for that. 
Um, and this kind of brings to our scripture today, as it contains one of the most quoted or familiar scriptures, I believe, we've heard time and time again in the entire Bible. So if you will, turn with me to the 20th chapter of, of Acts, uh, beginning with the 32nd verse, as we hear Paul's farewell address. Paul writes, Now I commit you to God and to the word of His grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus said himself, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when Paul finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and he prayed. And they all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. And what grieved them most was that his statement was his statement that he that they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. We hear again this biblical truth that can't be put any plainer. I mean, Paul echoes the teachings of Jesus as well as sharing instructions upon, uh, upon which Paul kind of based his, his life. It's one we've heard before. I mean, we've all heard it's, it's better to give than receive. It's more blessed to give than receive. And, and here's this guy who once lived his life not giving who, who lived the better part of his life selfish? Who, who lived the better part of his life hateful? I mean, if you recall Paul's mission in life, his job, if you will, was to capture and kill people who believed in Jesus. I mean, that's what he did. And the same people who followed Jesus' teaching about giving and loving. And now he is sentenced, if you will, and sitting on death row for what? What is he on death row for? It's not for, for killing the hundreds and hundreds of, of Christians. <laughs> He's on death row for living and teaching and encouraging people to love and give just like Jesus did. And for Paul, love and giving place him where he was. I mean, this guy lived both sides of the fence, if you will. And he still, he confesses, it is better to give than Receive. <clears throat> Crucial step in living the life that we've always wanted is to give. Because we're blessed. We're blessed in the giving. And, and the problem with such teachings is that we believe it, but yet we simultaneously doubt its truthfulness. I mean, I mean, don't we? I mean, why is that? I mean, we believe that, but we kind of doubt, doubt the truthfulness. I mean, if we believe that we are blessed when we give, and that it's better to give than receive, then, then wouldn't we be going around giving freely? So why are we so reluctant to give? I think for one, I think for one, the gift may be rejected. I mean, it may be unappreciated. It may be misused. And when we open ourselves up, I mean, we, open, we become kind of vulnerable. I mean, have you ever been in a deep conversation with someone where you shared and poured out your heart and soul? Where, where, where you were engaged with them and you opened and you let them know an intimate part of your life. And you shared with them something that, that, that you took a risk to share. And, 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 you, and, you, and you just... Just didn't know how they reacted, would, would react, but you took that leap of anyway. And there's this big, huge, intimate moment, and you've just given them your heart and soul. And they're like, oh, dude, man, have you seen the line in the new Taco Bell? Yes. It's like, yeah. And that's hurtful, isn't it? Isn't that hurtful? So maybe we just don't give. Maybe it's just too hurtful. And when we give, we open ourselves up, and there's this 
deep-rooted, realistic probability that we may get hurt. So if it can be rejected, if it can be hurtful, and if it can be unappreciated, then why risk even getting it? But instinctively, instinctively we know that great living comes from giving. Instinctively, we know a, a great blessing comes in, in giving of our time, in giving of our energy, in giving of our possessions. I mean, there is social and scientific research that tells us time and time again what Jesus knew through a, a spiritual instinct. That actually, I mean, everyone will tell you there's six greatest needs every human being needs. I mean, I mean it's, it's meaning and, and purpose. It's self-esteem. It's a loving relationship. It's a spiritual connection. It's security. And it's a sense of immorality. I mean, I mean people ask, why did Jesus take so much time giving and, and especially and, and talking about giving, especially talking about money? Because if you think about it, money has the power to help or hinder people for these six basic needs that determine their quality of their daily living. It's, it's science. And all of us know. All of us know that this received that. So, what are your giving habits? Do you give freely? Trusting God will provide? I mean, do you open yourself up and take a risk? Because when that person does engage, when that person doesn't talk about Taco Bell, but but it talks about, I can see and hear the pain in your voice. When someone takes time to listen, and when someone responds back to you appropriately, I mean, isn't there no better feeling in the entire world? I mean, isn't there no better feeling to, to feel accepted and loved and secure? And wouldn't that be called a blessing? And it doesn't happen every time. I wish it did, but it doesn't. But when it does happen, there is nothing like it. But the only way you can guarantee that it will happen is if you give. Reminds me of a coach I had that said, the only, only way I can guarantee we don't win this game is if we don't play this game. Same thing with giving. Jesus said it is better if you focus on your giving instead of your receiving. Paul said it, it is more blessed to give than receive. The same statement, paraphrased if you will, by two men who gave their life. You can't find the blessing in giving unless you give. And we're all invited in this adventure that, that we call faith and love. And this is the only path to living a life that we've always wanted. Because we are blessed in the giving. Will you pray with me? Gracious and wonderful God.